Yeah, it, it, it's, I, I, just, I find it fascinating though, that again, in, in terms of the way that things have changed, uh, I, I know when I, when I was a student, and I actually used, used to photograph people when I was a student, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, I, and I would photograph, um, I, remember, I remember going to a Punch and Judy show. Yes. Uh, and if you could get yourself just behind where the booth was, I mean, the, the, the way that uh, the, the kids and the parents actually were animated watching yeah. this thing, it was tremendous. Uh, and so you could take these pictures, but I was always aware that I was sort of casting an eye towards the parents for, you know, for them to say, okay, you know, I, for, for them to know that I wasn't trying to be a bit dodgy. But now I don't think I'd do it. I really don't think I, I, I would do it. But, but I have to say, this is the difference between good photographers and, and like rubbish like me, is that David has this, uh, again, that really does have this capacity uh, as, as you say, it becomes, uh, I mean, we've all seen Star Wars, haven't we, the film, right? And you know when they say, let the force be with you, and you've just got to go with it, you know, you've got to just got to let it go. And it's, I, I'm sure that, that David has this sort of thing that flows through him, which allows him to make his pictures without people being aware. I've, I've been sitting in David's house talking to him like this, like, like this far mm -hmm. apart, and then about five minutes after he started doing it, I realised he's taking my photograph. <laughs> I know that's a real skill. I mean, that is absolutely astonishing. So, um, yeah, I, th I think you're right. I, th I think that is something. Once you sort of, uh, you have that running through you, you can. I, d I, I just think it's like anything. If if you do it enough, mm. you suddenly do it instinctively. And I, I, I prefer uh, Daniel Barenborn, who's, a, in my opinion, a great, great, concert pianist, he's roughly the same age as I am, and I've known him a long, long time. And I remember going, he was giving a concert at the Wigmore Hall once, and, and we went out for dinner afterwards, and, and um, I was, you know, looking at him, and he said, David, uh, he said, you're obviously thinking about it. what is it? And I said, well, well, two things, Daniel. One is that I don't, I do not understand how a human being can play a piano like that. It's outside the realms of what I think is human poss the possibility of a human being. It, there's something extraordinary about listening to a concert pianist playing a piano. It's not human, you know. So uh, make of it what you will. But I said, but what is the essence of being a concert pianist? He said, David, you play the piano a lot. And it's the best bit of advice I've ever had from anybody. There's this great concert pianist telling you that the basic thing of being a concert pianist is you play the piano a lot. And I always say the same with photography. The basic thing of, of being a photographer is you take lots and lots of pictures. And if you take lots and lots of pictures, and if you're very self-critical, and you begin to look at the pictures you quite like and the pictures you don't like, you will suddenly start shooting a few more pictures like the ones you like, and gradually you will discover yourself. And, and that's, you know, that's one of the things we're all trying to do. There's no point in photographing like everybody else. You know, you, you, you might get enormous fun out of that, and that's great, and social thing, you do it in the family, etc. But you're not going to be the successful photographer if you photograph like the next person. You know, it's, it's common sense, you know. So the only way of finding yourself, whatever that is, is to shoot lots of pictures and look at lots of pictures. And when you look at lots of pictures, try to discover, you know, which ones you think are the great <coughs> ones. And, and my guess is, I, I mean, we had a very good example of it. I, I, I used to collect photographs. and and swapped them sometimes and was given them, etc. And I, I gave a lot of the pictures to the National Museum. And the first exhibition we did there was the Swaps exhibition of which we show roughly 100 pictures from these people. That exhibition was seen by 56,000 people. Now that's one in six of the population of Cardiff. Now they don't come because of Twitty or Twitter or whatever it's called. <laughs> Um, they come through word of mouth, obviously. And what it proved to me 
is that if you have extraordinary work, if you have an extraordinary pianist, if you have an extraordinary painter, the general public are not stupid. They might not know why they think this person's a great pianist, but they know a great pianist from a not great pianist. And that's why 56,000 people came to this exhibition at the museum, because they're great photographers. They're great photographers. Now, you can have big debates about what that means, and, uh, you know, academics go on for bloody years talking about this. But they are great photographers. And, and uh, I think that's significant. You, you know, it's as simple as that. And, and, and I, don't, I don't know how I got onto this track, but anyway. <laughs> I, I think it's a good one. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. No, but, but actually it is. You know, uh, I know Dan, you know, we, Dan and I have had uh, a chat about this sort of thing and about where do you, where do you start with your interests? And, and I know, Dan, you, you were looking, uh, you, you spent a lot of time uh, knowing that there was something about photography that you quite liked, but you but you realised that there, I, that you had to look at photo books. You had to look, uh, and and you were able to identify people who were really good at it, and then those who were less yeah. good. You know, and I think you mentioned like Joseph Kadelka. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there was I remember uh, discovering contemporary photography, and thinking, my God, this you know I I can't make sense of these pictures, but there's obviously something about them and I was really keen to kind of unlock their secrets you know so that uh, I started buying books more books and just researching until one day it kind of it, it kind of clicks you know and you're thinking well I know this is magical now you know William Eggleston's a, a prime example of the kind of photography that used to confuse me 20 years ago and but by buying his books and and constantly looking at the work it it the, the secrets do present themselves to you after a while you know of just kind of looking at every detail and and, and photo books in general you know if you're looking for inspiration you don't buy a new lens buy a photo book mm -hmm. that's exactly what look at pictures yeah, yeah you know pictures. you're supporting yeah. artists you're keeping the whole yeah. mechanism going and mm -hmm. that's how it uh, that's that's my kind of mantra anyway no, I think that's that's true, and, and uh, again, you know, when I was a kid, I mean, the, the uh, my uncle had uh, he, he used to buy he was a sort of amateur photographer, and he, and he used to buy all the European photo books, you know, and I, and that's where I started. It was it was looking at them. I think the trouble is sometimes, and hey, I, I actually worked in academia, right? Uh, <laughs> I think some, I think sometimes we we try too hard to make sense of it, and it's not something that you can necessarily articulate in a kind of, in a, in a formula. I mean, some people make amazing pictures. There it is, learn from them, you know. And I think it's true to say that uh, if you look at enough photography, enough photographs, you start to realize what's good and what isn't because you feel the ones that are good. Yeah. The other thing which I think uh, that where David, where, where we can learn from, from David's um, astonishing ability to make pictures, is in lots of different ways, but also there's a, is, is another range uh, in his, in his uh, arsenal, if you like, that he, he has, where we can look at uh, some pictures here, uh, and if we, if, we, if we look at the Epint Mountains and we see uh, the sheep in that, <laughs> the sheep in that in that shed. That is such a beautiful picture, and and there, there is humour that runs through lots and lots of your work. I mean the uh, the the pit pony there, you know, sort of uh, the the miners are having their lunch, or the pit pony sort of coming in to see if he could have a share of the sandwich or, or whatever it is that, that they're doing. So there's a there's a humour, but also there's an intense seriousness in other parts of work that you've done, David, and, and you know, uh, we're not that far away from, from Abhavan and the work that you did at Abhavan, uh, which is a, you know, completely different, of course it is, it's a very different kind of thing. That, that, that ability to be able to work across all of those emotions and, and, and all the intensity of, of um, grief and joy Again, you know, I, I, you know, it's like an impossible question. I mean, what, what, how, 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 
how, how do you think you, you, you were able to kind of cover that whole spectrum of human existence? Is it? Is it, is it? Well, it, it actually isn't any different. Um, one of the things that I learned, because when I, when I started in photography, I, I knew nothing about photography. I'd never shot a picture before in my life. Um, but for various reasons, I, I decided I wanted to be a photographer. And, and at that time, um, photography really was based around what was called Fleet Street, where most of the magazines were, most of the newspapers. But for me, it was a job. I wanted to do a job, which meant I had to earn money. And, and the people that I had around me at roughly the same age were people like Don McCullen, Philip Jones Griffiths, John Bulmer, who is sitting in the audience here, um, Patrick Ward, um, uh, Ian Berry. I mean, when I look at that group of they were that's an extraordinary group of young photographers all starting roughly at the same Thing. So we were very much in a sort of competition with each other and, and I remember once, you know, magazines at that time, newspapers, really didn't pay very much money and, and, and sometimes, you know, the Observer or the, news, uh, the Sunday Times would send two people to cover the same thing. So I remember one, I went to a thing with Burton Russell and Don was by the side of me and I said, oh, Don, that's good, you've got, you know, an assignment. And he said, yeah, I'm working for the Observer. And I suddenly thought, hang on, I'm working for the Observer. You realise one picture was going to go in the newspaper and the competition you had was Don McCullen. You know, well, you better get your bloody pictures in focus at least. <laughs> you know, that's the first thing. And so there was this background of training of of A, how to get the pictures in focus, how to get something which was clear and, and would reproduce in the newspaper. And then you began to learn other things, and that was that if you went to photograph a personality, if you were wise, you didn't just take the single portrait of them, but you took a portrait of them in their environment, and you took a big... So you, you would shoot a little you would get used to the idea of shooting four pictures instead of the one portrait. And what you realised, it was my job, was that if the newspaper or magazine just wanted the one picture, if suddenly something had gone wrong, you would be giving them three more pictures and they could run four pictures. And so you began to learn to always do things in terms of a little story. So any one of these pictures here, if you saw the contact sheets, you would see close-up pictures there, you would see wide-angle pictures there, you would see a variety of pictures around the same thing because it makes a little story. So when you when you get something like Abervan, Abervan was the most difficult thing I've ever photographed because A, I come from Wales, um, and, and it was obscene. Uh, uh, you know, 116 children suffocated by crap, which shouldn't be there, is, is about as obscene as you can get. And to get there and suddenly discover that Miners are trying to dig their children out of slurry, which is impossible to do, because as fast as you dig it, it fills back in again, etc. They didn't want us there, um, but my feeling about history of photography and, and photography for historical purposes is that I had to photograph, because I realised it was incredibly important that you documented this thing. So you have that tension there between the people who don't want you there and you knowing that it's important historically for you to be there. That is difficult to do. Now you get past that through experience. You learn how to be gentle. You learn how to be polite. 
you learn how to move quietly, slowly. But you shoot in the same way as you would anything else. You shoot a story. I'm very aware of Adabavan saying, what I need to do is I need to get a picture which shows the whole of the locale. So insanely, I have no idea why I did it, I went up the side of the, to the top of the slurry, where the slurry came down. Now, in hindsight, it was insane. Yeah, you know, that had just <laughs> gone down and killed all these people. And I was going up to the top of it. I was going up to the top of it because I knew I needed that picture. You know, and then I did. and then I would, you know, I would shoot close-up pictures. I would, clo I would be very subconsciously conscious of knowing I needed a, some close-up portraits. I needed them digging. I needed the the Salvation Army giving out sandwiches. All these things, and you put together this jigsaw puzzle. But it's exactly the same jigsaw puzzle as photographing the last pit ponies in Wales. It's no different. It's exactly the, the process is the same. And that process comes, the more you shoot, the more instinctive it becomes. You know, so there becomes a way of doing it, you know. Um, I don't know if I'm being over complicated sentiment. And, and, and in the end, you know, it, it, the pictures from Aberfan were, were shown in Parliament and, 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 and undoubtedly it had, a, you know, just a little bit to do with clearing the, the slag heaps the, in, in, in Wales. And I had a lot of letters from miners and things, you know, thanking me for the pictures, etc. So, so it, it, all these things are a balance between what you think is right and what you should do and, 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 and the difficulty of, of doing it, you, you know, but... Yeah, but, um, I, yeah I think it's, a, it's something that I've been thinking about um, recently, uh, knowing that we were going to have this conversation, really. Um, thinking about the fact that uh, Dan, myself, probably, uh, well, certainly me, um, I, I, I wouldn't really want to be to photograph anywhere other than in the valleys. I, and you know, I used to get told off by students, particularly uh, when I was able to take them on overseas trips, because I, I would never take a camera. And they'd say, well, you're the photography teacher, take, a, take your camera, what's the matter with it? And I'd say, I'm not interested in this. You know, if we're going to New York, it ain't the valleys, you know, I mean, I, I, I end the story. And I think that's, in a way, that is one of the things that but that's my contribution to why photography is bad now uh, compared to what it was. Because with David, uh, and what, what, you know, the way David's just so, so eloquently articulated what he said was that, in a way, we could drop David Hearn anywhere on this planet and you'd make pictures. And I, you'd I, I, I really don't care where I am. Mm. Um, I, I'm just interested in recording what is there, you, you know. So if I have a partner, which I have, a, it, it's great because she decides where in the world she wants to go and I say, fine. <laughs> uh, I, I, I couldn't care. I, I couldn't care. Uh, to me, it's interesting wherever I am, you, you, you know. I, all I'm doing is very simply recording what I say as accurately and honestly as, I, you know, we can get in a big debate about what is honesty and what is accuracy, etc. But I know what I mean by that, you, you know. So I will do that and I'll do that wherever I am. Mm. You, you know. And in a, in a way, and when I, what I'm saying, I think that I'm part of the problem of yeah. photography today. I, I, I think that it's almost like the telescope's been turned around because... Uh, I think you represent uh, those who use photography because you want to explore the world yep. and those around you in that world. And then there are people like me, I suppose, at the other end. I'm not, I, I'm not interested in the world. I'm interested in this little bit there. Yeah. And that's, perhaps that's wrong. You know? No, no, it's, it's I, not I, wrong. I mean, one of my favourite books is done by somebody called Jones who um, was a gardener. And, and, and uh, apparently he put little ads in the gardening magazine saying he photographed your gardens, etc. And he did a book, just photographs of vegetables. 
And it's just magical. It's just absolutely magical. That's all he did was photograph his flipping vegetables, you know. But it, it's, it, it's difficult to explain because, I mean, people laugh at anything visual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I promise you, if you see the book, it's really different from the way other people photograph vegetables. It's just got a real feeling of love, etc. And, and it's, it's part of the problem I have with, with what are called more modern photography now is that a lot of the time people are doing things that I... I, I don't want to get on dangerous waters now, but which seem to me much more involved with projecting the photographer than projecting the subject matter. To me, the photographer's very unimportant other than they do it very well. But I, I never get the feeling that Sergio Lorraine or, or Joseph Kadelka are, are the least bit interested in themselves. <coughs> They're interested in the subject matter. And I see a lot of photography now, which I suspect is enormously to do with the photographer thinking, which might be right. I, it's just that I don't personally find it very interesting. Mm. You know. Yeah, I, th I think it, I, it's interesting, <coughs> one, actually, because, uh, again, for, for those who may be less familiar with, um, the, if you like, the history of photography in, 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 the, in the last century, for example, um, up, I, I would say that um, up, up until the, the, the mid 20th century anyway, uh, it, by, by, by and large, the, the, the people who were making pictures uh, nearly always were doing it for a commercial reason. Uh, and, you know, and again, David, you, 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 you knew Bill Brandt. Uh, who, who's now considered, I mean, you know, this, one of the most astonishing photographers that ever came out of Germany and Britain, actually, but, you know, a German, Britain, British photographer. Um, and somehow, I, I, I think that um, sometimes photographers like Bill Brandt have been sort of almost uh, taken over by some big PR machine, you know, and they sort of make all sorts of extensive claims about Bill Brandt this and Bill Brandt that. But actually, he was an amazing photographer, but he was making pictures for magazines. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? It, 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 no, no. I mean, Bill Brandt told me he never shot a picture in his life that he wasn't paid for. Yeah. Um, and and I, I could believe that. I, there's no reason why he would lie. Um, and, and, but you see, so many of the great photographers were the same. I mean, Walker Evans... Yeah, you know, spent his whole life working for for magazines. You know, Louis Hine, Jakob Rees. Uh, you go through the whole list of these extraordinary people. Um, they they had a job. You know, their job was to shoot pictures. That's what they did. And one of the reasons they did it very well is because if you've got a job. You do it from, you know, if you work in Tesco, you work from eight in the morning till, what, five in the afternoon. I've always said to young students, if you're not doing at least that amount of work to do with photography every day, you're a fake. Because you're, you're a photographer and it's much more fun than stacking shelves in Tesco's. So if you can't get more involved than the person that's doing that, you're playing at it. You really are playing at it. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be standing out there with the camera shooting pictures all the time, but you should be looking at books, you should be reading, you should be listening to the radio and saying, oh, that's an interesting place, I ought to go there. Or your life should be involved in photography. That's your job. And that's how you hope to make a living, you, you know. And that's what I'm looking for. And I would maintain that the photographers that I enjoy most, you know, Ouija, uh, Sergio Lorraine, Kudelka, Bresson, Walker Evans, they were all working photographers. That's how they earned their living. Mm. I don't think it's a coincidence. Yeah. Uh, just can we, can we just ask you a question? One, one last picture, and then, then perhaps we can have some questions. But um, it, it's again one of the things which uh, I, re I certainly recognise in, in 
photographs taken by good photographers is that everything in their pictures means something. It's there for a reason. Uh, this sounds a bit strange, actually, to say that, but 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 you know everything in the picture is really important. And uh, there's one picture here, David, in the corner there. Uh, mm. In it's actually taken in Trehavod, yes. uh, and it's of uh, what was then uh, Lewis Merthyr, sorry, no, Lewis yeah. Merthyr Colliery, uh, which is now Rhondda Heritage Park, and. Um, it's, it's a location that has been filmed and photographed uh, uh, since the 20s and 30s because it was the place where uh, in, the, in the days before the bypass uh, coming into, into, uh, into Porth, you had to drive past that actually to, to get into the Rhondda Valley. Uh, and there's something quite quite fascinating about that picture because because David really you know we, we know he photographs people incredibly well, but here's here's a photograph with no people in it, and the thing that always fascinates me about this David is that billboard, and it's of uh, Coleman's mustard, right? Col Coleman's mustard, but the, but it's, it, it's it's Egyptians. It's a, yeah. it's about Egyptian. Uh, and I, I, think I, I think we had a conversation about this one time, and, and I said, "Well, that, you know, why, you know, why did you take that picture?" And you were talking about the fact that you would what 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 had caught your eye there was this idea that uh, there was the the mining industry, which was then this is in the probably late seventies, uh, and it was sort of starting to, to you know to be to wind down or be you know. <laughs> That's not mince words. It was being destroyed, you know, by, by different things. But uh, that you felt that that actually was quite interesting to see that representation of Egypt, this once great empire that and civilization that sort of diminished. And again, it's back to your thing about culture, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the problem about talking about the past is is that I certainly do, and I suspect most people. You know, you invent the past a, a lot of the time. And, uh, you, you invent reason for doing things, etc. But, but in that particular case, um, I remember uh, the mine was closed or just closing, or, uh, and, and and I wanted to do something about that. And then, uh, talking to the locals, I discovered that the fence in the foreground was in fact cables that were used in the mine, in the, whatever they call it, taking the, not the lift, whatever yeah, it's called, the up and down. Um, and so that made me feel I wanted to make that quite a, a major part of the picture, the, the, the foreground. So that was where I was. And then, uh, if I look through contact sheets, I probably got three or four different posters on that wall um, and they just didn't seem mm. as good as they were could have been so uh, what you do you just keep going back you, uh, you know every time I went in that area I would go and look until and then suddenly there was something about a culture you know the Egyptians it's very vague um, uh, was there, and, and it seemed that that was the best picture, you, you know. So, I mean, I mean, it's a very conscious thought process in, in doing it, but it's a lot to do with tenacity, you, you know. It's, uh, I, I, I mean, somebody was asking me uh, about this picture, you, you know. Well, I remember I was, I was with, I can't, uh, it's very, very rude of me, but I can't remember, but I was with a, a, a really quite well-known singer at the time, pop singer, the and we were driving, it was absolutely belting with rain, and suddenly I stopped the car, and she said, what are you doing? So I said, look, I, I, there's a picture back there. And, and again, experience tells me that sheep don't like people very much, and if you move, they, they go somewhere else. So I literally was, from the car, moving six inches at a time, <laughs> slowly, in this belting rain, you know. And I was, I have never been more saturated in my life than when I got there. 
And I got there and I shot the picture. And, and uh, you know, I, I knew it was funny, it was charming, it was awesome. Then I got back. And I remember thinking, I wonder how many people would be willing to go and get saturated as though they were dived into a river or something, just to get a bloody picture, you know. Well, I think that is a little bit of the difference between some people do that and some people don't do that. It's as simple as that, you know. I'm sure you would do it. Oh, yeah. It's an obsession, isn't it? It, you, it, it is. It, uh, it, it, you really it, want, you know, you'll go to any length. If I, there's I, that possibility that you could end up with a great I, picture, I, I, you I know. I think so. And, and, um, yeah.